Start running options and you will quickly find yourself having to deal with terms such as 10 dot deviations, expected move, probabilities, and it's so important that you understand all those terms perfectly so you can take advantage of options. That's why in this video, we're going to cover the expected move. We're going to see what it is, how it can help you, and how you can use the expected move to your own advantage in your own trading. And if you like this video and you like to see more videos where I explain certain terms such as the expected move, probabilities, make sure you subscribe to my channel and you like this video, that'd be the best support you can give me. First of all, let's discuss what what is the expected move? What is the definition of that? And the expected move is the amount that a stock price is expected to move in either direction. For example, if you have a stock of $100 and the expected move is 10%, then we expect the stock to move by $10, whether up or down. Something super important to understand with the expected move is that they refer to what we call a one standard deviation move, encompassing 68% of the expected outcomes. What does that mean is that if we have a $100 stock and the expected move is of 10%, meaning that it's going to whether move by $10 up or down, we know that it's going to move by $10 up or down with the 68% certainty. And to make you fully understand how that works, just picture a normal distribution curve, meaning I'm sure that you have seen that before, you can find plenty of examples in real life uh, of normal distributions, and it's exactly the same for the stock market. If the $100 stock, let's say, was in the middle, meaning that the stock price right now, and we were expecting a 10% move up or down, whether it would go to $90 or $110, we know that it's going to stay with in that range with a 68% certainty. That's a one standard deviation move, and that's why we say that it encompasses 68% of the data. And to be able to calculate the stock's expected move, you need three ingredients. You need the stock price, you need the implied volatility, and you need the number of days to expiration. And those three together will give you an expected move. And this expected move, as I said before, will have a 68% certainty. But one of the questions that could pop into your mind right now is that when you're looking at an option chain, meaning that you're looking at all the expirations, you see that we have different days to expiration different implied volatility so how does that work do we have expected move for all those expirations the answer is yes we do for example if you wanted to know the expected move of a certain expiration you would need to take the implied volatility for that expiration the number of day for that expiration and the stock price and you can do the expected move for any expiration that you want you just need to know the implied volatility and the number of days to expiration and then compute it into the formula and the expected move formula is the stock price times the implied volatility times the square root of the number of calendar days to expiration divided by 365. To make you fully understand how we calculate the expected move, let's say that we have a stock that is worth $200. And we want to calculate the expected move for the November expiration, let's say the 20th, so it has 53 days to expiration as of today. Let's say that the implied volatility is around 30% for that stock in particular. Following the expected move formula, if we wanted to calculate the expected move, we would take the underlying stock price, so $200, times the implied volatility, 30% times the square root of the number of days to expiration divided by 365, meaning 53 days divided by 365, and then we do the square root of it. That would give us 22.8. And to interpret this number, you just have to say that there is a 68% probability that the stock price is going to move whether up by $22 or down by $22, meaning that there is a 68% probability that the stock is going to find itself between $178 and $222 by November expiration. So you see it's not really difficult and you can know very quickly what is the probability of a stock staying with a certain range with the 68% certainty. But the question is do you really need to calculate all of this for each and every single stock that you look at? No of course not. You can really use your broker very easily and they tell you all of that information. So let's jump into the computer and let me show you where you can see for example in Thinkorswim or Testyworks where you can see the expected move so it's easier for you. To find the expected move on Testyworks is very easy. When you open an option chain just look on the right of the screen and you're going to see all of the expirations and the implied volatility and the corresponding expected move for that particular expiration. So you can see that for example for the 16th October expiration we have an implied volatility of 25.8% and expected move of 30 $13.34, whether up or down. And you can see this little symbol here, that means basically whether up or down. Same thing if we're looking at the November expirations, you can see that we have an implied volatility of 29.9% and we have an expected move of $26.40, whether up or down. And remember that with those expected moves, we have a 68% certainty that the stock price is going to stay within the range of plus or minus the expected move. If we look at the SPY right here, we have the last price, which is of $328 around this 
And if we have an expected move of $26.40 for the November expiration, it means that we have a 68% probability of seeing the SPY staying around $302 and $354 until the November expiration. So now we're on the Thinkorswim platform and you can see that it's exactly the same setup. When you have the option chain in front of you, look at the right side of the screen, you're gonna see the corresponding implied volatility for the expiration that you're looking at and the expected move for the same expiration. But if you had to remember one thing about everything I just said, it would be about standard deviations. Because we know that the expected move refers to a one standard deviation move, whether up or down. And that one standard deviation range, meaning that if you're putting the price in the middle and one standard deviation down and one standard deviation up, it has a 68% chance of happening. But there is not only the one standard deviation move, there could also be a two standard deviation move, a three standard deviation move, and even more if we're going further. And those ranges, the one standard deviation range, the two standard deviation range, have different probabilities. The more expected outcomes you encompass, the more probabilities you have to see the, for example, the stock price of staying within that range. If we have a one standard deviation move that has a 68% probability, if we try to encompass further values, meaning let's say two standard deviation move, then we have higher probabilities of seeing the stock price staying within that certain range. And for a two standard deviation move, we have a 95% probability of seeing, for example, the stock price staying within that certain range. And if we try to encompass more values, and so we reach the three standard deviation move, it, it represents 99.7% chance of seeing the expected outcome staying within that certain range. So you can understand how useful that can be when you talk about one standard deviation, two standard deviation and three standard deviation moves. You can quickly refer to the associated probabilities and understand how much chance do you have to see the stock price staying within a certain range. But that's the amazing thing about options. You can really create trades that have specific probabilities exactly like you want them to be. Let's say that if you want to create a trade that is neutral and that you bet that the price is going to stay within a certain range, you can. If you want your trade to have 68% probability, you can. 95, you still can. 99, you can. And that's the amazing thing about options, is that you have so much flexibility around probabilities and what you can do that you really need to understand what you're doing so as to take advantage of it. And if you have any questions, just comment them below. I'll be happy to answer them because I know it can be a complicated subject and it's so important that you understand it fully. And if you want to see more about implied volatility standard deviations, make sure you watch my implied volatility video. I'm sure they will help you understand even more the subject. Thanks so much for having watched and in the meantime, wish you all the best and see you in the next video.